What's up, everybody? The question of the day is, what sample rate should you be recording at? And the answer is 48 kilohertz. That's it. That's all the video took, and uh, thanks for watching. That's great. Okay, there's a little bit more to the answer than just that, but I do want to talk about what sample rates are actually going to do for you and how to get the most out of your recordings with sample rate in mind. Now, before anything else, I need to talk about what sample rates actually are. Think of maybe frames per second, the frame rate of your camera as you take video. A lot of the time you're going to be shooting in 24 frames per second or 23976 or 2997, sometimes 5994, all these different numbers that are going to equate to how fast your camera is actually capturing information once you have something in front of it. Audio sample rates are basically that same concept, just applied to capturing sound rather than capturing images. Now your eyes actually operate and transmit information to your brain a lot slower than your ears manage to. And that's why you can get away with lower frame rates like 23976 and have things kind of move as you might expect them to in real life. When you get into higher frame rates, you're capturing more information per second. And so you're seeing a lot more smoothness in between all your images. That's why something like 120 frames per second, if you play it back in real time, it's going to look really, really super smooth and fluid in comparison to something like 23976, which is going to have a little bit more motion blur to it in between each frame. It's just because you're playing back that information a little bit more slowly per second, and so you're not getting as much in that span of time. Now with audio sample rates, you're going to see numbers like 44.1 kilohertz and 48 kilohertz and 96 kilohertz and all the way up to even one gigahertz in some recorders and some situations, which is a little bit of an outlier, but it's all the same measurement. It's all capturing a certain amount of information about the sound that's being received at the record level per second. Generally, when you're recording audio digitally, the lowest sample rate that you're going to find is 44.1 kilohertz. Now, why that number? Well, all digital audio recording is based around the idea of Nyquist theory. And without getting too into the weeds, it's a pretty interesting subject and it's got a lot of history, but it's not super practical. Nyquist theory states that whatever frequency your audio is made up of, you have to sample that frequency at twice the rate of that frequency. And that's so you can capture both the peak and the trough of whatever the highest frequency you want to record is. Now, frequency is kind of a fancy term for the pitch of a sound. You have really low frequencies like, say, 40 hertz. That means you've got 40 different cycles per second of a particular waveform. It's easiest to have some kind of visual representation here, and unfortunately, you can't really talk about this without getting kind of technical and white papery and a little boring, but it's important to know. So looking at this chart of a one hertz sine wave, a sine wave is literally just the most simple waveform you can get. One hertz means there is only one cycle of that wave per second. The bare minimum number of samples that you have to take of this wave to represent what it's doing is one at the peak and one at the trough. And at that point, you have the tiniest amount of computer data that's able to say, there was a sine wave that happened, and it was one time over the course of one second, and the loudest part was here, and the quietest part was here, and that's what we've got. Now, computers are not very smart. They've gotten a lot better over the course of the last, you know, 10 or 15 years, but they really only represent kind of what you feed them and what you tell them to actually do. So when you only have two samples to actually represent a waveform like that, you're not gonna get good playback and good representation of everything else going on in the wave. And so you have to sample way, way higher in order to get a real accurate representation. This would be like if you had a frame rate of five frames per second. If you play that back, it's gonna look choppy, it's gonna look terrible. That's what low sample rates do. They're really inaccurate representations of sound. If you have really high frames per second, like say, I don't know, a million, if you've got some crazy specialized scientific camera or you know one of those phantoms or something like that, you're gonna get a lot of information. And if you play that back, you're gonna get the most accurate representation of whatever's going on in front of a camera. Similarly, with audio sample rates, if you have really, really high sample rates, you're going to get much more accurate representations of sound, but you're also going to be able to capture higher frequencies the higher sample rate you go. So let's revisit that 44.1 kilohertz number. That's sampling audio 44,100 times per second. The human ear only happens to be good at hearing frequencies up to maybe 20,000 or 22,000 hertz. So by doubling that number, 
that's where you get the 44.1 kilohertz sample rate. You're able to sample those really, really ultra high frequencies at their peaks and at their troughs. Now, obviously to get anything in between that peak and trough, you're gonna need a higher sample rate. It's not gonna accurately represent what's going on in those upper frequencies. But the argument is generally, you can't hear them anyway, so what's the problem? Now, there are a couple of things to note as we go up in sample rates. So again, 48K is the standard for anything video related. When it comes to the music side of things, 48 kilohertz is inherently more accurate than 44.1 kilohertz. So you're gonna get a more accurate and higher quality recording. Are you gonna be able to hear the difference immediately? Probably not to the untrained ear. You can definitely start picking things up if you're in a really good room with really accurate speakers and you really know what you're doing. But generally for most people, it's it's not gonna matter that much from a tangible perspective. That being said, capturing higher frequencies more accurately, one of the inherent kind of qualities of these sample rates is that you end up with sort of a natural low pass filter. You can only capture up to a certain point in your frequency range, and then it starts falling off in accuracy. With higher sample rates, you get much better high frequency representation, and it kind of introduces less artifacts and less distortion and less sort of inaccuracies in your recordings if you start working up in those numbers. Speaking from a purely frequency standpoint, you basically just cut the number in half to figure out which high frequency you're gonna to be topping out at. 96 kilohertz, you're gonna be able to record all the way up to 48 kilohertz of actual audio. You're just gonna be sampling it 96,000 times per second. 192 is the double of 96,000, 384, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that gives you kind of a good idea of maybe what frequencies you're going to pick up and why you might wanna pick those up. If you're ever recording anything that you need to pitch down really, really far for sound design purposes, or maybe you wanna get a really heavy low frequency impact with a little bit of high end detail, and you do that by pitching down a sound that you've recorded at a high sample rate, you're gonna bring all these frequencies that were inaudible to you into the audible range by pitching things like that. And if you don't have them because you recorded at a 48 kilohertz sample rate, it's just gonna sound like a bunch of low frequencies there because you're gonna have lost all that information. If you record at 192, well, you captured all the way up to 96,000 hertz. And so all of that information that you couldn't even hear before, if you pitch that down by two, three, four octaves, all of a sudden it's in the human hearing range and you can get more detail and clarity out of something like sound design. One other thing to note here, and this actually goes especially for music as well, 96 kilohertz is generally where you're gonna find sort of the highest quality recordings that are practical for disk space and have that nice balance between a really good representation of what's going on without taking too much file size. In sort of the big name studio realm and the music side of things, a lot of recordings get done at 96 kilohertz so that everything down the pipeline from those recordings is gonna be represented with the highest quality possible. And this goes back to something I always harp on in videos is the source quality rule. If you start with the absolute best representation of something, you're gonna have a lot of flexibility. You're gonna be able to get a lot out of your recordings. If you start with the worst representation of something or even something that's not very good or maybe wasn't the best but is still passable, any iteration of that down the pipeline, whether it's sound design or music or really anything, it's gonna degrade slightly if you're not careful. Anytime you EQ something, you're introducing a little bit more chance of artifacting. Anytime you do any kind of processing on something, you introduce a little bit more of that risk. So you always wanna make sure that your source recordings, the gold masters that you create, are the highest quality you can get. Again, generally speaking, you're gonna find 96 kilohertz in that realm, but because the standards for delivery of everything are still 48 kilohertz, usually that's good enough for most things. One other kind of practical thing to note when it comes to recording higher sample rates, generally that requires a lot more resources from whatever device you're using. And so you can run into limitations on how many tracks you can record at once. Something that can record 48 kilohertz across eight tracks might only be able to do six tracks at 96 kilohertz or four tracks at 192 kilohertz. There are plenty of mobile field recorders that have run into this issue over the years. I love the Sound Devices 788T, even though it's a really old recorder at this point. That was a fantastic recorder at 48 kilohertz because you could get not only great representation, clean preamps and all that great stuff, but 
you had limiters that you could put on every single one of those channels that you were recording so that any really loud sound that was unexpected or intense would run into a limiter, it wouldn't clip, it would still sound good, and everything was going to be fine. At 96 kilohertz, that required so much processing power from the device that it would disengage all of the limiters across all your channels. So if you're recording a gun or a car or maybe even just loud dialogue on eight channels, if you wanted to do it at 96, you didn't have that kind of protection anymore. So if you clipped, you clipped your audio at the record path and there was not really anything you could do about it. That's not as big of an issue these days, but it is something to keep an eye out for in the tech specs or white papers or manuals of any of the devices that you might end up picking up. So hopefully this video wasn't super confusing. I know it gets a little bit technical when it comes to kind of the inner workings of recording sound, but the basics to note here are higher sample rates are generally gonna be more accurate. They're generally gonna capture higher frequencies so you can pitch and time stretch a lot better and a lot more effectively. And they may not be necessary for you. So when in doubt, if nothing else, record at 48 kilohertz, no matter what you're doing. If you have something specific you wanna do, if you wanna get higher frequency representation or just higher quality, 96 to 192 is a good bet as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, comment down below with any questions you might have about any of this stuff. And as always, thanks for watching.